Give him worship, give him worship, give him worship. Be intentional about it. Be intentional about it. Father, we give you worship. You deserve our worship this morning. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. He is our champion. He is our champion. He keeps our heavens open. He is faithful in doing that all of the time. All of the time. Give him worship this morning. Give him worship. Worship the faithful father. Worship our faithful father. He doesn't abandon his own. He attends to the matters of his own. And he keenly attends to the matters of his own. He's not afraid af about our matters. He handles our matters with keen interest. And it brings things to an end. Surely there is an end. And the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Surely there is an end. Who said it? <laughs> the Spirit of Grace said it. And the Spirit of Grace is saying it again. Surely there is an end. And the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Shall not be cut short. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. Mighty Father, we receive the engrafted word of grace from your mouth this morning. I stand as your servant, totally surrendered to you. I stand as your mouthpiece. Let your word freely flow. Let your power be manifest and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Glory to God. We want to thank the Lord for this morning. We appreciate the Father of all grace for how far he has led us this morning. It's been about him and um, it continues to be about him. This is the how I will receive his word. And I trust the Lord for express uh, expression of his word this morning unto us. As a church in general and as individuals. Amen. Um, if you observed for a while now. Uh, it's like the Spirit of God has been directing our attention to um, uh, growth. I have observed that, okay? Um, up till this last Friday when our pastor ministered wonderfully and um, took us through the school of the Spirit. So, so I have seen in a couple of weeks that um, God has been hammering on being grounded you know, in the things of the Spirit. And uh, before I came for service on Friday, I'd already known that I was going to minister on this topic. As when Pastor came and said, School of the Spirit, I said, well, Father, it's your word, and you have the express way Express right of way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I believe the Lord impressed my heart for us to look at the cost of discipleship. The cost of discipleship. Amen. Um, a disciple is someone who believes in and follows the teaching of a leader. So, he has a leader before him or her. He believes in the teaching of that leader and what that leader stands for. And not only that, he imitates. So, so he tries to follow the leading of the leader. 
Amen. And um, for those of us who are believers, we have just one leader, we have just one master. He is Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. He is our king, he is our lord, he is our master, he is a shepherd. We are the flock, we are the servant, we are his disciples. Hallelujah. We are his followers. So we follow his teaching. We follow his leading. And we try to be like him. Praise the Lord. So a disciple always strive to be like his master. A disciple always strive to speak like his master. To talk like his master. To act like his master. To even think like his master. Amen. A disciple uh, is meant to stay with his master for him or her to be able to do all of this. Praise the Lord. The disciple, it behoves on him or her to position himself or herself in such a way that there is constant flow of resources from his master unto him. For a disciple to be an, a disciple indeed, he or she must pay certain costs. It will cost you something. No, it will cost you something. Hallelujah. Why is the Lord hammering on being grounded in things of the Spirit at this time? Why is he hammering on discipleship? Why is he hammering on you know, asking us to know him better and get better by the day. It's because the days of evil are here. They've always been here, but the intense city has gone beyond what we can imagine or think. I grew up in this country. I know how it was in the 70s. I know how it was in the 80s. I mean, nobody ever imagined in the 70s and 80s that the level of wickedness we are witnessing in Nigeria today would happen. Nobody will ever imagine that good will be downgraded and evil will be celebrated. Nobody ever imagined that someone who has just defrauded somebody of thousands or millions of naira will be bold enough to come to church the Sunday after and mingle with God's people and do that with all seriousness and with all with 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 fun fear. And feel no remorse. I mean, the church is where it should come for him or her to receive his instruction to be saved and to be delivered. But, but they come without any remorse. God is hammering on in depth in relationship, He's hammering on closeness with the Spirit. Is hammering on men and women coming to the realization that they are ambassadors of his kingdom here on earth and should stand as such. In the times of evil and darkness, the light of God should radiate through the ones he has called unto himself. To dispel darkness and gross darkness that's pervaded the earth. The Lord is saying this morning to you and I that I'm calling you to a higher level of relationship with me such that men will see you and see Christ and will want to be like Christ, we want to accept Christ, we want to receive Christ, and want to go all the way with Christ. 
He's saying he's looking for disciples who are ready to pay the cost to be disciples indeed. He's looking for someone who is ready to cut down and to cut off every encumbrance that will cause you not to have a good walk with him. Hallelujah. Oh, it will come with a cost, but it's a cost you can pay. It will come with a cost, but it's a cost that you can bear. For his yoke is easy. His burden is light. The Bible says his burden is not grievous. Hallelujah. Oh, there is a burden to bear. There is a yoke to carry as a disciple. And the Lord says you can do it. It's not grievous. It's possible. And when you do it, you glorify him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you do it, you glorify him. He is glorified. He is glorified. He is glorified. I want us to look at the book of Luke. For us to begin to see the attributes of a disciple. The book of Luke chapter, chapter 8. The book of Luke chapter 8. And I'll begin reading from verse 4. It's the parable of the sower. And we're going to look and we're going to see in a minute who a disciple is not and who a disciple is. From verse 4. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake a parable as his custom was. A sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and it was trodden down. And the fowls of the head devoured it. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said those things, he cried, He that hath hears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Verse 11. Now the parable is this. He's breaking it down. The seed is the word of God. Somebody said the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then comment the devil and take it away the word out of their hearts. Lest they should believe and be saved. Verse 13. They on the rock are they. Which when they hear receive the word with joy. And this have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. Verse 14. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. And verse 15, but that on the good ground are they which in an earnest and good heart haven't heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Hallelujah. Now, the parable of the sir from the mouth of our Lord and Christ himself. From this parable, we will be able to see who a disciple is not. For us to have a good understanding of who a disciple is, it's good for us to know who a disciple is not. So that if peradventure there is any trace of these characteristics, then we'll be weary and then we'll adjust. Hallelujah. A true disciple. It's not the wayside man like Jesus described in the 
parable of the sower. The seed is the word of God like we have read. And the word of God is relevant to everyone. The word of God is relevant to the old and the young. The men and the women and the boys and the girls. The word of God is relevant to the saved and the unsaved. Hallelujah. When the word engages the unsaved, it translates the unsaved and brings the unsaved unto salvation. Hallelujah. When the word of God engages the one that is saved, it makes him a better person. Praise the Lord. And there is no one that has arrived in the kingdom of God, I must say. So we'll keep listening to the word. We'll keep receiving the seed of the word. And we'll keep getting better. Hallelujah. The word can mature us. The word can mature us. It can increase us. It can advance us. And so we keep getting ourselves exposed to the word. The seed. Incorruptible seed that Peter said. And that incorruptible seed will keep transforming us. Hallelujah. In the parable of the sower, everyone received the seed. The wayside man received the seed. And the purpose for which the wayside man received the seed was for him or her to believe and to be saved. Praise the Lord. Now, the disciple is not the wayside man. The disciple has crossed that, that order. The disciple has gone beyond the wayside. Hallelujah. The disciple has received the word. He has believed and he has been saved. But the wayside man, like Jesus described here, had to receive the word to believe and be saved. Amen. So the disciple is not the one that to, to be saved. He's the one that has been saved. He has gone beyond the wayside. Hallelujah. And you see, you, you will recall that when Jesus was explaining, he said the devil came to pick the word. A an unbeliever is at the mercy of the devil. The devil has no mercy, actually. No mercy. The devil has no mercy. He's at the beck and call of the devil. So, he peeps and say, Why are you mingling around the world? Ah, I can see the pecks of the world. He quickly picks it so that it won't, the, the wayside man won't have salvation. Hallelujah. But you see, the devil has lost it. Hallelujah. He has lost it. Because if the wayside man misses it now, the wayside man will have it again. Hallelujah. Everyone that is under the authority of the voice of Jehovah this morning, and is a wayside person, receives the word, and is translated, and is changed, and becomes saved in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It says he received. But the devil wouldn't want the next thing to happen. Believe and be saved. He wouldn't want that to happen. So he quickly picks the word. He quickly picks the word. Hallelujah. He distracts him. He wouldn't allow him to, to, to listen to the word. He will hear but he won't listen. The word may come but he won't allow it to come into his heart. He quickly picks it up. Hallelujah. That is not the disciple. The disciple is not the wayside man. The disciple is not the rocky man. The disciple it's not the rocky man. Amen. So the word fell upon the rock. But there was no root. So the disciple is not a rootless man. Jesus said, but for lack of root. For lack of root. For lack of root. It could not bear fruit. Hallelujah. For lack of root. It could not bear fruit. And when describing the rootless man. The rootless believer. He said, temptation will come. He will receive the word. Believe. Rejoice. But when temptation comes, he falls away. Hallelujah. The ruthless man falls easily like a pack of card under the burden of temptation. Temptation will always occur. Temptation will always come. Hallelujah. The devil will always tempt. See, the devil can go beyond tempting. The devil can't engage the spirit of the disciple. Hallelujah. But you see, the devil can tempt the disciple. The devil can tempt the believer in Christ. Hallelujah. And when the believer in Christ falls under the weight of temptation, because it lacks root, what happens? That person, that person falls like a pack of cats. That is not a true disciple. 
A true disciple is not one that is torn infested. A true disciple is not one that is torn infested. Like I said, I'm laying a picture. Let's paint a picture of who a disciple is not. He's not the person that just want to be saved, he has been saved. It's not the one that is rootless. He has roots. He doesn't fall under the burden of temptation. He's not the one that is torn infested. The cares of the world, what we shall eat, what we shall drink, or how the children will go to school, and all of their legitimate things, but he's not, he doesn't allow all of this to choke, to choke the seed, to choke the world, to choke the life of Christ out of his life. Hallelujah. He will not allow the burden of life to bring him or her to the point of compromise. Hallelujah. He has learned to cast his burden upon the Lord. He has learned to trust the Lord. He has learned to fix his heart, trusting the Lord. Hallelujah. He has he has learned how to encourage himself in the Lord. David was a man like that. A man that under the choking atmosphere that he found himself in 1 Samuel chapter 30. Under the terrible choke of loss of his dear ones. No, uh, 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 the Amalekites came to ravage his camp, took away his wife, took away their children, took away their properties, took away everything from him. And rather than allow himself to be choked, he rather broke out, encouraged himself in the Lord and said, God, what else should I do? Lord, where should I go? Father, what do I do? A disciple will not be weighed down by the cares of this world. A disciple will not be weighed down by disappointment. A disciple will not be weighed down by whatever is thrown at him or her. Rather, he comes out of the dust. He shakes himself out of the dust. He shakes himself out of the dust and simply asks, what should I do? And he hears expressly, pursue, overtake, Recover all. A disciple hears at all times. A disciple hears at all times. A disciple trusts at all times. A disciple believes at all times. He believes unto salvation. He believes unto the saving grace of his master. A disciple trusts is Jesus. A disciple trusts at Jesus. Hallelujah. A disciple has come to the point where he says, even there he slays he slain me. How we yet trust him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's not that thorn infested person. Oh, a disciple is good hearted. His heart is good. I want us to look at um, the description in verse 15 again. But that on the good ground are they which in an earnest, look at the description, earnest, talking about transparency, talking about pureness, purity, earnest, and good heart. I won't hurt the world. It's always about the world. Nothing short of the world. Hallelujah. Keep, keep it. So he receives and he keeps. He won't let go. And bring forth fruit. He processes what he hears. A believer receives the word. A believer keeps the word. A believer processes the word. Into what? Into fruit. And he does it patiently. Hallelujah. A disciple receives the word. A disciple keeps that word, preserves the word in his heart. How do you preserve the word? He keeps meditating in the word and he keeps saying to himself. A disciple keeps, he puts at the front burner the word of God. And in process of time, that word becomes fruit. But it will take a process and it will take time. Hence, patience is needed. 
Hallelujah. That is the attribute of a true believer, of a true disciple. And all of this will come at a cost. Hallelujah. Oh, to process the word. To, the Bible says, and the word became flesh. The word became flesh. Oh, the process of the word becoming flesh requires patience. And the disciple has trained himself. He has trained himself. He has trained himself to the point that he waits until, until the word becomes the fruit. A disciple is not on the fast track of life. A disciple is not the one that wants the quick fix. Oh, no, 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 no. Not the quick fix. He goes through the process. He goes through the process. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want us to look at that same chapter of the scripture, Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. Another parable of Jesus. And we'll draw some lessons from that. No man when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything eat that shall not be known, and come abroad. Take it therefore out ye here, for whatsoever, for whosoever hath, to him shall be given. Whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken, even that which is similar to have. But my, con my um, concentration is on verse 16. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covered it with a vessel, or put it under a bed, but set it on a candlestick. The candle, the light, and the candlestick. New King James Version puts it this way. The lamp, the light, and the candlestick, and the stand, the lamp stand. Flip your Bibles to Luke chapter 11. I will tie everything together very soon. Luke chapter 11 verse 33. The same thing Jesus said there. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. And then it goes on to say, the light of the body is the high. Therefore, when thy high is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thy high is evil or bad, thy body also is full of darkness. Take it therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body therefore be full of light, have no part dark. The whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give the light. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27. Can you please bring it up for us? Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. Hallelujah. Now, it was a parable Jesus told us here. Amen. But by the understanding of the Spirit, this morning I want to bring it before us that a disciple is a lamp. And not just a lamp, it's a lamp with light on it. Hallelujah. And not just a lamp with a light on it. It's a lamp with a light on it placed on a stage. Hallelujah. Those three things must be complete for there to be the true manifestation of discipleship. The lamp, light on the lamp, and the stage for the lamp to stand. And in chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, we'll see that the light is required for illumination. Not just for the lamp, but for those around the lamp. The disciple is the lamp 
in the hand of the Lord that has a light of the Holy Ghost and that is placed on the stage in the world for men to see and for men to understand who God is. Hallelujah. The disciple is placed on the stage. He's placed on the business stage. He's placed on academic stage. He's placed on ministry stage. On ministry stage. He's placed on the different hills that shapes the world. God placed the lamp upon those stages with the light of the Holy Spirit. And the disciple stands on the stage and illuminates all the surroundings. Hallelujah. And men will come to see. And men will come to understand. Hallelujah. Look here, you are the lamp in the hand of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27. It says, the spirit of man is a lamp. All men, saved and unsaved, have a spirit. Because a man is a spirit, he lives in a body, he has a soul. But you see, the lamp remains as it is until it becomes a, a tool in the hand of the Lord. That is why it says the lamp is, the spirit of a man is the lamp in the hand of the Lord. It must come to the hand of the Lord. Where after which the Lord will light it up. The spirit of grace will come. That is exactly what come, what happens when a man becomes born again. The lamp is lit up. Holy Ghost comes in. The lamp is lit on. And the Lord holds the lamp. And places the lamp upon a stage and says this is your vineyard occupy till I come. Disciple this is the stage where you manifest occupy till I come. Manifest my person. Manifest my power. Manifest my praise. A disciple is a lamb that manifests. Hallelujah. And that is why after you have given your life to Christ hallelujah and you are lit up it becomes a journey with the light, the Holy Ghost. A journey of life with the Holy Ghost. And you go on and on in this journey. And it keeps training you on that stage he has placed you. And before you know it, you become a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. And men will look at that city and we see the light and will be attracted. Hallelujah. And then when they come to you, you turn them onto disciples. And then you multiply. The fruit will come. Hallelujah. 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 The true disciple. The true disciple. The true disciple. I want us to look at our lives. And begin to examine our lives based on the truth from the word of God. And let's begin to see where amends must be made. Including this one speaking. For God is calling us unto higher call. Higher call. If there must be grace in abundance, then there must be heights to climb. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, it comes with patience. So the disciple at times will look around and it's as though nothing is happening. It's as though there isn't anything exciting happening around him. Patience. Patience. The Lord will soon reveal that grace. The Lord will soon reveal that glory. The Lord will soon reveal his hand. The Lord will soon reveal his power. The Lord will soon reveal it. It takes patience. So let that disciple have patience. Oh, let that disciple tread with caution. Let that disciple accept the instruction of the spirit. Let that disciple be disciplined. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Child of God, a disciple is a lover of Christ. 
He loves Christ passionately. In the book of John chapter 20, there was a woman who would not leave the tomb of Jesus even if every other person would leave. Jesus had been crucified the day after and the day, the day after was Sabbath and after that the third day, she went to the tomb with spices to preserve the body of Christ. And she got there, the body was no more there. And because she couldn't function without her master, she wouldn't go until an explanation was given as to the whereabouts of the body of Christ. Actually, she ran back to meet the disciples. Peter and John came to check things out. They found that indeed the body was not there. They left. This woman will not leave. This woman will not leave. Addiction to loving the master. She wouldn't leave. And then Jesus surfaced. Jesus called her by her name. Called her by her name. Mary. Mary. And she recognized the voice of her master. Hallelujah. Addiction unto loving the master. Pastor was explaining something to us on Wednesday. Amen. Jesus had just risen and he told Mary, don't touch me. I have not appeared before my father and your father. Pastor was explaining on Wednesday that he needed to bear the blood of the covenant before the Lord in the tabernacle. And he dare not touch, I mean, nothing unclean must touch him up to then. Amen. And, but Christ would not finish the process because love was holding him back. Love was, somebody won't, you don't let go. And Jesus said, I will have to manifest myself to her. Before I complete the process. Love is compelling. Love draws the hand of the Lord upon your life. Hallelujah. A disciple is addicted loving the Lord. At all costs he loves the Lord. At the peril of her life she loved the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean nothing else mattered to her. She loved the Lord. A, a, a disciple loves passion, passionately. A disciple is an imitator. He imitates what Christ has done. In John chapter 14 and verse 12, Jesus said, and those who believe in him, in, in me, shall do what I've done and more, greater works than these. Amen. So Jesus is saying, look, I am living the stage, but you are staying back as my disciple and you will carry on. You will do what I have done. A disciple is a true imitator of his or our leader. Christ is saying that he has brought you to the point where he expects us to be imitator of him. We heal like he healed. We raise the dead like he raised the dead. We live sinless life like he lived sinless life. Hallelujah. A disciple does not make a practice of sin. Mm -mm. Because the seed is not in him. First John chapter 3 and verse 9. The seed of Sin is not in him. Why? Because he was actually born by the incorruptible seed of the word of God. So the seed of sin can be in him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So he doesn't make a practice of sin. Oh, he may falter. Oh, he may transgress. But it is not habitual with him. Hallelujah. In fact, a believe a disciple matures in that area of life so that as he grows in grace, less of sin is sin. Less of S-I-N is S-E-N. Hallelujah. So what he used to do before, he does no more. Hallelujah. Oh, these are the attributes of a disciple. The costs of discipleship because of time. It will cost you your time. Three T's. It will cost you your time. 
It will cost you your treasure. It will cost you your talents. It will cost you your time. The Lord will demand fellowship times with you. He will demand fellowship times with other believers. So God expects you as a believer to come for services and fellowship with other believers. Not just on Sunday. He expects to see you on Wednesday for Bible study. He expects to see you on Friday for miracle service. And for you to watch Faith Roundtable and be ministered unto. He expects you on Sunday. He expects you to be in the midst of believers at every given opportunity. It will cost you your time of fellowshipping with your father as an individual. It will cost you the time you spend alone with him in your quiet time. It costs you that time. A disciple must be able to give out his time for all of this. It will cost you your treasures. It will cost you your money. It will cost you your substance. Hallelujah. A disciple must be ready at all times to lay down his treasures for the cross of the kingdom of Christ, his master. It will cost you your skill, your talent, your skill. It will cost you what you are able to do with your hands. Hallelujah. It will cost you, you should serve your master with your skill. It will cost you that. And when you look at all of that is your time, your treasure, your talent, all constitute your life. Constitutes your life. So Jesus said, if anyone shall be his disciple, he should be ready to lose his life that he may gain it. He's saying, let down and pick up again. In discipleship, you let down and you pick up. Peter said, we have given all. What is it? What is in it for us? Christ said, you will gain all you have let down and much more. I want to welcome you, disciples, unto a time of much more. Your services are not in vain. You're seeking him, not in vain. You're laboring, not in vain. He sees, he knows, and he will visit. Mm. He sees, he knows, and he will reward. He sees, he knows, and will cause you to laugh. The end result of it all, you will be brandished as a symbol of glory that men will run to and ask, how are you doing it? And then you will point them to the Lord. Can you please rise on our feet this morning? Isaiah chapter 61. Come and see what your master came to accomplish for you, to accomplish for me. And all of these that he came to accomplish for us shall manifest. Shall manifest. It shall manifest. It shall manifest. His coming to the heart was not in vain. He came to achieve purpose. And part of what he came to achieve, we are going to see now. I want us to open our Bibles. I want us to open our Bibles. Pick your Bibles if you have one. It's always a blessing to read. Pick your Bibles if you have one. Isaiah chapter 61. The mission statement of Jesus. He made allusion to this one. The scroll was given to him to read. And he said, this is what is written concerning me. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 61. I want us to read together. Let's vocalize. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound. 
to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all women. Pause. To comfort all women. So, he knew that there will be occasion when the disciple will be faced with situation that brings about mourning. But he said he won't leave you comfortless. He said you will know comfort. You will receive comfort. I want you to receive God's word as we are, as we are reading. Verse 3. To console those who mourn where? In Zion. Should somebody mourn in Zion? Zion, the city of the living God? Should somebody mourn in Zion? Oh, it may happen. But there is a comfort. So that the comfort with which it will comfort you, you will comfort others with it. Hallelujah. So that when men come to you and say, this is my situation. I've been there before. Receive the comfort I received when I was there. That is the reason why there will be mourning in Zion for you to know comfort, for you to comfort others. Hallelujah. Listen, you are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Turn the process when you are going through everything and it seems as if nothing exciting is happening. It's because it's making out something that will come unto glory and then men will come and say, how do you do it? Oh, I was where you were before. But receive comfort. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 3 again, to console. Let's read together. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Disciple in Zion. Let's pause. Disciple in Zion in ashes. So degrading. But what will come out of ashes? Beauty. This morning, beauty comes out of ashes. In the name of Jesus. Let's read on. Let's read on. The oil of joy for morning. The garment of praise for the spirit of evidence. That they may be called tree of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the whole ruins. Pause. Going back to the ruins and you are rebuilding. You will visit the ruins and you will rebuild. Those areas of life that's, that have crumbled and have been turned to ruins. The power of grace this morning says you will rebuild in the name of Jesus. Let's keep, keep reading. They shall raise up the former desolations. Ah, you were robbed and emptied. You will be filled. Oh, you will be filled. It will become former desolations. It is not something permanent for you. The Lord turns things around and it becomes a testimony for you. Desolations giving way for fullness in the name of Jesus. And they shall repair the ruined cities. That the, same, the desolation of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall heed the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory you sh shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Double honor. Double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess what? Double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Finally, for I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery. 
for burnt offering. I love justice. Let's put a stop to that. He, he loves justice. What is justice? You have served him and you will be rewarded. What is justice? You have sought after him and he will bless you. What is justice? You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water. What is justice? You have looked out and searched out and stayed focused and continually followed him as a disciple. What is justice? Your justice is that you have and you are bound. Receive the word of God this morning, wherever you are. Receive the word of God this morning, wherever you are. Receive the word of God this morning, wherever you are. Receive the word of God this morning, wherever you are. As a promise of change, as a promise of turn around, as a promise of turn around, the ruins, the ruins, out of the ruins you are having, you are having a rebuilding. Out of the ruins you are having a rebuilding. Out of the ruins you are having a rebuilding. Out of the desolation, you are having a feeling, a feeling. The Lord is filling it up. The Lord is filling up. Out of those ashes, beauty is coming out. Beauty is coming out. Beauty is coming out. Beauty is coming out. Can you receive God's word? Can you speak God's word this morning? Can you receive God's word? Can you confess God's word this morning? Out of those ashes, beauty is coming out. Out of those rings, out of those rings, a building is coming out. A building is coming up. In the name of Jesus, out of that desolation, out of those desolations, cities are coming out. Cities are coming out. Cities are coming out. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lofresh Kambanda Baliandoliasa, Rokata Bashandalia, Remdo Paligo Shanda Libro Boloska, Rinke Tama Zopri Enga Topaligalia. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I think we must first begin by asking the Lord to have mercy on us, to help us wherever we have failed as a disciple, wherever we have failed even to match up, to measure up unto true discipleship. Can we just tell the Lord to have mercy on us? Can we just tell the Lord that this day you make amends? Can we tell the Lord that you won't allow cares of this world to take you away and off the, 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 the sight of God? That, that the cares of this world will not weigh you down to the point of relegating to the background the things of the spirit that you will be faithful in praying you'll be faithful in studying the word you'll be faithful in serving the Lord you'll be faithful, you'll be faithful you'll be faithful you're making adjustment you're making amendment and you're telling the Lord that you're amending you're telling the Lord that you're back you're telling the Lord Lord, that here you are, you are coming as true disciple. Here you have, you are coming addicted to the love of Christ. That you will love him with all your heart, we love him with all your soul, you will love him with all your mind, you will love him with all your strength. You are confessing to the Lord this morning, you are confessing to him this morning that you will serve him with everything you have, that nothing, 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 nothing shall stop you. Nothing will separate you from the love of Christ. Nothing, 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 nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pray for you the stage the Holy Ghost has put you on. The platform the Holy Spirit has put you on. You are the lamp. The light of the Spirit is upon you and is in you. And he has placed you on that stage. And there must be manifestation. There must be praise. There must be glory to be revealed. Men shall come to your light. <laughs> Men shall come to your light. Can you begin to speak to your stage? Can you begin to speak to that platform? Platform, this is the reason why you were established. This is the reason why the Lord placed me on you. And upon you, the name of the Lord will be glorified. Upon you, there will be fruits to show. There will be fruits to show. Whatever you are doing, whatever the Lord
God has committed into your hands. Whatever you are involved in is the stage the Lord has put you. And there must be glory, there must be praise. There must be glory, there must be praise. The light must shine. There must be no darkness around the stage. There must be no darkness upon the stage. Jesus said, let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. The light must so shine. The light must so shine. The light must so shine. There must be increase in intensity. There must be increase in intensity because we grow in discipleship. And as we grow in discipleship, the light becomes intense. The intensity of the light also grows. With growth comes intensity in growth. With growth comes growth in intensity of the light. So the light so shine upon my state. The light so shine in the name of Jesus. The light so shine in the name of Jesus the Christ. La kaba sanda bigalia ramda bashanda la 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 ramda bashanda liga la 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 la. Tell the Lord my stage is a platform for advancement of your kingdom. The stage, my stage, my platform is the source, is the stage for the advancement of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. So you are a captain of ten. Those ten will know the kingdom. A captain of hundred. Those hundred will know the kingdom. A captain of thousand. Those thousand will know the kingdom. Last bring a shadaria. Ambrata bashana baka sandali galere. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, my shandali, bala bala la shandali. Amra ba 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 shanda ka shandali galere. Bramda ba sonto ba shandali galala. Amblos ke ringele bala bala ba shandali bala. Amra sanda ba sanda katali galere. Yemda ba sanda ba shampri enge to ba sonto liya. Yemda ba sanda kala ba la ba la 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 la. What is lacking we become surplus. What is lacking we become surplus. What is lacking we become surplus. What is lacking we become more than enough. What is lacking we become more than enough. Thus says the Spirit of the Most High. Yes, oh disciple. What is lacking we become more than enough. What is lacking we become overflow. Rikla shamba kayesh. Lepto pesoto palike saduria. Ya brinke shanda baga sodoria. That tree that is cut down will sprout again. The tree will sprout again. The cut down tree will sprout again. In the name of Jesus, it will sprout again. It will grow. It will bear fruit. In the name of Jesus the Christ. I see a tree. Branches but no leaves. Branches but no leaves. Because of dryness. At the scent of water. At the scent of water. Dry tree receive life. Dry trees receive life. In the name of Jesus. Let the foliage appear. Let the foliage appear. Let the green appear. Let the green appear. Let the fruit appear. Let the fruit appear. In the name of Jesus. Thank you father. I see a cloud. <laughs> I see a cloud. So it's about to rain. It's about to rain. It's about to rain. It's about to rain. It will 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 rain. Bakashanaria. Dry ground. Receive the rain. Dry ground. Receive the rain. Dry ground. Receive the rain. In the name of Jesus. Dry lives. Dry lives. Receive the rain. Receive the rain. Hey, Prashadalala. The cloud. Of God, it's about to rain. The clouds of God, it's about to rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let the floodgates of heaven be opened. Let it rain, let it rain. Thank you, Father. I see babies. 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 As many as desire, receive your home. Receive your home. Bashapa Sobria. Receive yours. Receive yours. Receive yours. Receive yours. Rashanda Maria Shada. Receive for your loved ones. Receive for your loved ones. I see babies. I see them. I see babies. In their shores. I see them in their shores. Receive yours. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Somebody get a 
Shadalia. If the Lord before you can be against you, everyone contending against you. The Lord says, I will contend against Yeka Shandabalia, Yeka Shandalia, wherever and whoever has opposed you up till now. The Lord says, I stand. I stand as the contender. I stand as the contender. The Lord contends. The Lord contends. The Lord contends. This morning, the Lord contends. The battle is over. <laughs> the battle is over. This is the victory that overcomes. This is the victory that overcomes. Even our faith. So the victory has overcome. So the battle is over. The battle is over. I see a new chapter. A new chapter is opened. 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 A new chapter is Ah, I see oil, oil, oil poured, poured upon people's head. The Lord is pouring oil, fresh oil. He shall anoint my head with oil. He shall anoint my head with oil. He will lift my head. He will lift my head. He will strengthen my arms. He will anoint my head with oil, with fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Thank you, Father. All of us on the Baliga Shandalia, Langa Labala Balala, I'm the Balabaga Shandabala Sondalia, M. the Bosonda Labala Shandalia. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So, in your dreams, they keep chasing you no more. That has ended this morning, no more. No more bad dreams, no more demons chasing you on your dreams, no more. No more. No, ah, oh, it's running. It's, Fast track it. He will fast track it. He will fast track it. It's on. It's 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 on. A, it's going on a snail speed. But he said, "I'm fast tracking. I'm fast tracking. I'm fast tracking. I'm fast tracking." Mm, he's granting speed. He's granting speed. He's granting speed. What has delayed up to now? He grants speed. He fast tracks. He's fast tracks this morning. Yes, Lord. I won't be surprised if we begin to receive letters. Have letters. After now, letters. After after now, letters, wherever you are hanging, I call you forth. Wherever you are hanging, I call you forth. In the name of Jesus, the process is fast-tracked. The one attending to that letter has no sleep. We have no sleep. That king will lose his sleep. That king will lose his sleep. And we attend to the letter. And the letter will come this week. In the name of Jesus, he fast-tracks. He fast tracks, he fast tracks, he fast tracks, it comes. Hallelujah. All of us son Tagalia. Bashanda You have abandoned building projects. You have you are going back to the building projects. You are going back to it. You abandoned it because of lack of resources, because of lack of funds. You are going back to it. You are going back to it. And the Lord will begin something new this week. Over that, over that building project. Something new this week. Something new this week. Something new this week. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Lift up your voice and give him praise. Exalt the name of the Lord. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him an honor and adoration. Please come have your seats. Have your seats. As overcomers, as the ones the Lord has visited. Father, thank you. Shall please bow down our heads as we encourage those on the wayside to come to where the action is. You are not born again. You have to give your life to Christ. The Lord is saying, come to discipleship and you will enjoy it all. Every bit of the way. You will know the blessing. If you are such a person in the house, just place your hand across your chest. So that I know I'm praying for someone. You are watching online. You can do the same. It's not something to be ashamed of. Actually, it's something to be proud about. So place your hand across your chest as I pray for you. I really can't see anyone for now. But peradventure someone is out there watching online and is doing this. I will pray for you. Father, for as many 
doing this. And paraventure someone is up there in the gallery that is doing this. Please you pray along with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give my heart to you. I come to your saving grace this morning and I receive salvation. I have received your word. I have believed. Therefore, I am saved. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. From now on, I'll be called the disciple of Christ. From now on, I'll be called the son of God. Thank you, Father, because I'm born again. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray you receive. And I pray, Lord, that you establish in the name of Jesus. The Lord, there will bear fruits. And fruits. And fruits. I'm mature in you. In the name of Jesus. Bring her to Bushandan. 